partnered by Times Influence. As robust democracies, Britain and India have the strength and the will to reshape the narratives and contours of global politics in the days to come. In this context, India can play a significant role as a strategic partner of the UK, making it imperative to deepen trade prospects and ties between two of the world's oldest and largest democracies. Presenting the Economic Times India-UK Strategic Conclave 2018, a groundbreaking initiative that focused on global leaders, deliberating not only on our present but determining our future course of action to script a new chapter of economic change that will chart fresh growth paradigms. We're now very pleased to invite the Right Honourable Baroness Verma of Leicester, Chairman of the European External Affairs Committee, former Minister of Energy, Climate Change and International Development, to set the tone of the conference. The title, New Rules, New Challenges, I think is very prominent, given the state of affairs, not just in the UK with Brexit, but actually how the world order is changing all around us. Um, the business community has also phenomenally changed. And I think part of what um, I'd like to, to focus on is the fact that um, one of the issues now at the forefront of most businesses is how do you survive with artificial intelligence coming on board, with digitalization, with the third bottom line. We, we cannot now avoid talking about sustainability and environmental issues in the business, uh, in the business, business plans. Good business sense is always about bringing in all the talents, all the potential, and looking it through different lenses. Because if you're going to succeed as a business in the 21st century, if you don't have all of those component parts, you will not survive. So I take leave now. Thank you very much indeed. Discussing UK and India's future trade relationship, a panel of experts deliberated on the evolving nature of partnerships in order to drive prosperity and business opportunities between the two nations. Uh, we are in a fairly chaotic period in the, in the world uh, economy and there's obviously uh, a trade war on between the US and China. There is, um, I mean, no one is really very clear in this country as to whether there's going to be a hard Brexit or a soft Brexit on, on the terms. What's your take on the, on the uh, you know, <clears throat> the fact that UK-India trade has been stagnant? Well, I, I think for the, for the last few years, you know, I, I think part of the reason I think for the UK-India trade has been stagnant is you know, the European growth, and we've seen it in our own business, has just been so significant and so extensive. And I think it's, to some extent, I think, encourage businesses just to expand more, do the traditional routes of European expansion, the US expansion. And I think Brexit is actually causing companies to take a step back and look at other economies like India. We're certainly doing far more work now evaluating and assessing Latin American investment, Indian investment, and Asia PAC investments for, uh, for companies in comparison to what we were doing four or five years ago. Siddharth, uh, the fact that you're located in the UK shows that the London and the UK are, um, are still sort of hubs of global business in the sense that especially if all of you have strong domestic businesses, yet you've chosen to, you know, to, to locate yourself in the UK. What is the advantage? Why do you do that? I think there's super complementary skills. I think the UK is a great base for going overseas. So like when we give briefs to everyone, you know, by and large, we say, look, if it'll work in, in the UK, it'll work in India, then it should, you know, thumb rule, it should work in other sure, parts of the sure. world. So, so that's the general idea. We're trying to sort of, whether it's product, whether it's brand, and, and, and that's what we're seeing in the UK, which complements the entire goodwill and the management that we built in India and the capabilities we built there. We're able to add a full new layer now in the UK, and it's working seamlessly, and it works both ways, actually. Um, Kishore, you've been a pioneer in sort of taking Bollywood soft power uh, uh, Indian soft power, particularly Bollywood, uh, to many parts of the world, notably the UK and indeed to India as well. Um, how does, uh, what are the opportunities that you see in the UK? The UK market share has gone down with the vis-a-vis -vis the international market share from 40% to 10% or maybe 7%. But, you know, the India-UK India co-production treaty, in fact, has helped us a lot whereby the UK government uh, is giving us about 25% of, of the budget of the movie as a tax credit to be shot here. 
So we were the first company to shoot in about 12 years ago, an Indian movie in UK, uh, which we got the grant from the British government. Now as many as about 15 films are being shot this year. And it will be about 300 million pounds, I think, to be invested in UK from the Indian companies shooting the movies in UK and we're availing the grant. And that has worked very well between Indo-UK partnership. Sanjeev, how easy or how difficult have you uh, found it to do business in India? So um, we have five investment hubs across the world. Right. UK, US, France, Australia, and India. And India definitely is by far the most difficult out of those five. So there's no denying that. But having said that, there is two points to remember. In terms of the opportunity, it's also by far the greatest. It's the, some of the stats I was talking about in terms of this rising population, this young you know, billion people coming into the workforce, that also means the demand in India is undeniable. It's, it's pure mathematics. Consumption of all items, whether it's services or uh, industrial goods, <clears throat> will rise dramatically. So that is undeni undeniable. And the other point is, I believe it will get easier. So we have a fundamental view that we are at a watershed moment. Things have not got easier, actually maybe even gone one step backwards uh, for now. But eventually they will get easier. IBC process is very frustrating, but there is an IBC process which has never been there in the history of the country. I think that's why Indians are dynamic by nature. <laughs> we, we keep moving the barometer as we go along and we, we, we bring spice to our life. Uh, but I can only tell you, I, I can only tell you that the opportunity is there like you pointed out. And we, we just need patience because uh, I think we're going the right way uh, and patience is going to help uh, India grow to the next level. Innovation in today's world also means sustainability, it also means safety, and it also means that a country where cost consciousness is of a primary, uh, I would say, uh, it, it's primary on people's minds because India is a country which does not like to pay more for its products. So we said that let's turn electricity into man's best friend rather than its worst enemy. And this is the thought process that sparked off this whole uh, research and development and we are happy to say that it's been pretty successful. It's, and we are doing this more as a social cause, more as a cause to wake up India. We are looking to push progress into the country. We've been so far lacking in terms of product quality. The country has been lacking and the people have been lacking and that's why we say that we have a lot of ignorance as far as safety standards go in India. Our quality of life in India, and if we differentiate India as an investment destination and as a quality of life destination, I think the quality of life leave, leads much, much, much to be desired, however rich or poor that person is. So we need to improve our quality standards, we need to improve our safety standards, we need to keep the Indian flag flying high and therefore we are very nationalistic in that way. Wherever we go, and right from the beginning, we've been projecting ourselves as an Indian company. We are present today in uh, UAE also as a manufacturing unit, but we are very proud to say that we are an Indian company. We don't try to mask ourselves as a multinational as such. Uh, be Indian, buy Indian, proud Indians, that's what we are, and that's what we will remain. Umbrellas was a business which was seasonal, so we migrated to plastics. And plastic packaging was a unique thing in Northeast India where no other packaging company was there. And we decided to go for that. We kept on adding capacities year on year. And we were successful. Thereafter, the innovation was the key. We worked differently in every field of designing to offerings under different technologies of manufacturing plastics. We used to manufacture in all kinds of polymers. Practically it was a plastic packaging solution company rather than a plastic packaging company. However, the unique proposition which we gave to our customers, that was a reduction in price, by reducing the weight of plastics, 
by creating innovative designs which never was done by anyone else. Uh, customers came to us and of course timely deliveries and service and the latest technology from Japan helped us to go ahead and continue to advance and meet our customers' requirement. So we overcame the competition in next two years. There have been requirements of different kind of packaging over last 10 years in the country. One of them is from beverage industry. Companies like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Bisleri and many more required very large quantities of packaging. So we brought in technology from Canada, a company called Husky, from which we can make tubes. And these tubes are called preforms that can be blown into bottles into their factory. And uh, we continued to grow and we came at a time when there was a big demand and they had no suppliers. We continued to add capacities and today we are Asia's, South Asia's largest preform manufacturers and we account for 10% of India's PET consumption. Green plastic is one of the main subject which is being talked about, but it's not only the subject, it needs to be followed in future because we have to make the environment free from plastic pollution. 100% all plastics are recyclable, but we have to manage, we have to collect them properly and dispose them. However, that's not the 100% solution. Going forward, we have to look for biodegradable plastics for which research is on. There are different kind of biodegradable materials developed. However, at the moment, they don't fulfill the requirement of 100% decomposition. Uh, they have to be in different conditions after disposal, which is not practical. And at the same time, whatever biodegradable plastics are available, they may not fulfill the requirement of food packaging or retention of flavor to oxygen to uh, microbes. Hence, uh, further work is required and polymer manufacturers around the world are working on it. I think very soon we should find the solution and that will be one of the game changers in coming future. We should frame our own rules of business. As we go along, we should not follow anyone else 100% and there has to be innovation in business. There has to be something different offering than what others are doing. Unless you do that, you cannot go ahead. And of course, it has to be at affordable price. So your manufacturing to distribution to marketing, everything has to be innovative and uh, cost effective. This is a great encouragement to manufacturers and people like us. This is a stage set which is of international repute and uh, people coming from all over the country and different parts of the world sets an example, encourages people like us and of course it has been a great function. India-UK Strategic Conclave 2018 continued with an exclusive fireside chat on the business of entertainment with A-list Bollywood actor, producer and activist Shah Rukh Khan. Of course, um, you, entertainment is a high-risk business as we just touched upon. So what factors do you as an entrepreneur of cinema do you take into consideration when deciding to choose a specific product? So I think uh, the two things that you consider is can you be new? Without, uh, I always tell people, I, I would like to make cinema and tell stories uh, which will be, which will change your perspective, but not shake the ground that you sit on. Because mm. uh, Indian films are very uh, st steeped deep into culture. Mm. Uh, yep. and, and sometimes we can't completely shake up the ground that you're sitting on. So you need to somehow strike a balance between mm. creativity, 
mm. and uh, kind of giving a sensibility which is acceptable. Mm. Like I said, mm. it's still a community viewing in India mm. uh, to a large extent. It was time to felicitate game changers that have positively contributed towards society and strengthening ties between the two nations. Now we now kindly invite the following recipients onto the stage one at a time, please. Starting with Abhiraj Bal, Urban Clap, co founder and chief executive officer for enabling local services throughout distributive technology. Next, we invite to the stage the Dr. Atul Chon and Dr. Asim Chon from Amity University. Our next recipient this afternoon is Harshbina Zavri, NRB Bearings, Vice Chairman and Managing Director for Design Innovation in the Automobile Ancillary Industry. Our next recipient this afternoon is Jayant D. Maiska, MEP Infrastructure Developers, Chairman and Managing Director for Transforming Surface Infrastructure. The next presentation goes to Kishore Lula, Eros International, the Chairman for Changing Dynamics of Entertainment. <laughs> so we move on now to Pradeep Dada, NetMed's Marketplace, Founder and Chief Executive Officer for Disrupting Technology in the Pharmacy Industry. Now move to Sanjay Godawat, ladies and gentlemen, Chairman and Managing Director of Sanjay Godawat Group of Companies. This is for driving growth in emerging India. <laughs> Siddhartha Lal is next, ladies and gentlemen, for Ica Motors, the Chief Executive Officer for being a leading manufacturer in two-wheeler production. <laughs> Now please welcome the founder and executive chairman of Capital First, V. V. Daya Nathan. This is for driving markets in consumer and entrepreneur finance, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Next to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome VJ Goel, Indo-European Business Forum founder and chairman. Next presentation goes to VJ Career Raven Group as the Chairman and Managing Director for Fueling Sustainable Energy Solutions. <laughs> With the Managing Director of Manjushri Technopack, Vim El Kedia, please make his way to the stage for the leading innovation in packaging. The final presentation goes to Vindi Banga, Clayton Duglia and Rice partner for demonstrating leadership in equity investing. May <laughs> so we say thank you to all the recipients, ladies and gentlemen, and to our Lordships for presenting the prizes. And also again to Sterling Media, our PR partner, for their wonderful support this afternoon. Founder and Chairman of Capital First, V. Vedanathan shared his insights on the changing trends in the Indian ecosystem that have exponentially boosted the private equity finances in India. Let me say over the next eight years, it is well predicted that India's economy will probably be about uh, $5 trillion from the $2.3 trillion it is today. And let me just, examples are many, but let me just pick on one of them. Financialization of India, financial savings in India is today about 10% of our GDP. That's about $250 billion. In the next five years or eight years leading to 2025, it's going to be 15% of $5 trillion economy. That's $750 billion. So one parameter financial savings alone is moving from $250 billion to $750 billion. That's, that's significant, that's three times. Now. Financial savings, therefore, then leads to consumption. Consumption is expected to increase from $1.3 trillion to, say, $3 trillion. And investments, again, is going to go up about three times, or two and a half times. 
So this opens up, this coupled with the fact that India is rapidly moving towards digitization is, uh, and is able to pass credit down the ecosystem is actually opening up huge opportunities for three things. Uh, number one, for private equity players wanting to make investments in India to catch this big wave of financialization and the uh, value creation that can come from that. The next big one is uh, asset uh, reconstruction because all, you know the state-owned banks, uh, you know, bad loans and stuff like that. It just opened up a really, really large economy, and um, uh, certainly uh, in terms of. Uh, investments in other financial sectors whether it is insurance or mutual funds so basically the big play that uh, U uk firms can do in india is to uh, to participate by providing equity let me just give one significant example we were founded by a private equity firm who gave us about 150 uh, million dollars what did we do with it we leveraged it seven times in india maybe 10 times in india and made a 1.5 billion dollar loan book out of that and that $1.5 billion has now reached, uh, you know, finance, financing to say about say 2 million customers by giving them $200, $300 million lo uh, 200, $300 loans. So just a $150 million investment has reached 3 million people through leveraging and digitization. So therefore, we really appreciate the amount of uh, private equity if it came to India or any investment or FDI come to India. I think it has a huge multiplication factor. It's wealth creation for you. It's good for India. Right from the beginning in 2010, we had only one idea. We had an idea that we will start is uh, a, a company that is exclusively focusing on small entrepreneurs, maybe as low as 200 to 500 dollars loans, maybe for short tenor, and going up to longer tenor loans to maybe 100 thousand dollars. So no matter what the other opportunities were, we have just stuck to this one core idea. And along the way, the Indian ecosystem developed dramatically, especially in the last three, four years, and that has tremendously helped us. I'm happy to say that in the last uh, seven years, our loan book uh, has now grown to about four and a half billion dollars from, from starting from literally from the beginning. Particularly in the last uh, three years, I think just a lot of development has happened. One is with the Aadhaar, uh, coupled with the India stack, coupled with the mobile telephony, and coupled with a lot of data now available in India through many other means. Uh, you know, you can scrape SMS and give a loan. You can just, uh, you know, uh, just, just so many sources. So with that ability to analyze them, uh, I think it's become uh, a, a really big opportunity in India. So uh, one of the key things in India is that uh, analytics has developed a lot. Uh, and I think that is able to, that is helping us take better credit decisions, that's helped us to collect better. So I think the ecosystem has developed a lot. We are a very big play on the Indian ecosystem uh, because if the ecosystem has not evolved, there was no story here. Uh, I think the story going forward over the next 10 years is also all about India uh, because financial savings in India is going to dramatically increase in the times to come. Uh, by one estimate, it's going to increase from over $250 billion today to about $750 billion in uh, 2025, which is eight years from now. That's a three times increase. So financial services is that sort of an opportunity and no wonder I think it's a bit of a gold, gold rush these days. Starting in entrepreneurship early stages uh, can be sometimes very hard because you don't neither get equity nor get uh, debt. I think a good idea uh, with perseverance is I think a prerequisite. Once you have human uh, resources and you get high quality people, they figure out the rest of the problem because financial services business, unlike manufacturing, is all about people. So if people are there, talented people, motivated people, they solve all problems. With this, part one of the India-UK Strategic Conclave 2018 comes to an end. Summarizing the bilateral solutions to the challenges faced by these two countries across the business spectrum. Partnered by Times Influence.